Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertal for Renaissance Periodization, chapter six of the RP Diet Book 2.0, Renaissance Diet Supplements is gonna be part one of our talk today and then we'll do part two with hydration. Supplements, here's the deal. There are tons of them. If you go to any supplement store, you will see thousands of items on shelves, right? Most of them actually don't do a thing. I know, it's completely crazy. So of all the different ingredients you can put in supplements, most don't do anything. There's only a couple supplements that really work. Now, we didn't, in the book, review all of the supplements that do anything. We actually picked them on a couple of criteria. And let me please tell you the criteria because it's really important. We picked the supplements to include in our top list of effective supplements based on, first of all, data volume, how much science has been done. If something has two or three studies about it, it's not included in our list. Could it potentially be a supplement that works? Yes, but we need way more data than that. Dozens of studies, at least, to get it supported. To put this in perspective, one of the supplements that made our list, creatine, has hundreds of studies on it, if not more, right? Another one is data age. Sometimes a hot new supplement comes out and you get four or five or even more studies in the last couple of years. Studies show positive effects and people get excited. Then only over the long term, multiple years of research, the research designs get more advanced to start teasing out the effects. And we realize that maybe it was the placebo effect. Maybe it was some other thing. Maybe it was just statistical error. And it turns out that after five or 10 years of studying a supplement, the results come in and man, they don't look nearly as great as they once did. This recently happened to a supplement called citrulline malate, which does not meet our list. Some of the earlier studies on it, the first couple of years were real positive. And only lately have studies been trickling in, a lot of them, that say citrulline malate is maybe just not as powerful as we thought. Maybe it doesn't do much whatsoever. It would really be stinky for us to charge you <laughs> for a book link in the bio, by the way, uh, that, uh, you know, recommend supplements that are the hot new thing, but it turns out they don't work. What a ripoff. We're only giving you guys things that we think are pretty close to sure things. So we need them to be researched for a while. Another one is data consensus. Does the data sort of unequivocally point in the direction of the supplement definitely does something positive? For example, if we look at glutamine as a supplement, there's lots of research on glutamine, passes the first criteria. Lots of uh, research has been done over multiple decades, passes the second. So let's take glutamine. Well, the thing is, if you look at glutamine, a good fraction, over half of the studies on it, say it really doesn't do anything. Some of the studies say it definitely does something, and a lot of the studies are like, maybe. So the average sort of um, message from science on glutamine is like, don't, don't bet on it, right? It probably doesn't do anything worthwhile. So we have to have a pretty clear data consensus. If you look at data from one of the supplements that made the list, caffeine, does caffeine enhance endurance performance? If you look at the studies, probably about nine out of 10 of them are definite yes. Maybe, you know, one out of 20 are like maybe, and another one out of 20 are like no, right? Or, or probably not. That's a pretty good consensus. Probably something real is happening. Lastly, actually very importantly, real world feedback. Have actual athletes, not lab rats, not participants in research studies that last two months, use these supplements, gotten good benefits from them. Because if we can't answer yes to that, maybe that supplement is not really worthwhile. Um, they were studying um, various forms of bicarbonate for a while in the research, and it was starting to check a lot of these boxes. And then they realized uh, a little bit into the studies when they altered the design to include enough bicarbonate supplementation to really make an endurance performance go up. Um, one of the side effects was uncontrolled diarrhea. Imagine finding out about that when you get super excited about your bicarb supplement and you don't ask any real world athletes. You know, we ask actual endurance athletes to look at you and be like, yeah, I tried that back in the day. And you're like, so what do you think? They're like, don't do it. Don't do it. Real bad idea, right? Or it could do really well in research because research is done on beginners a lot of times and it might, everything works with them. And then your actual high-level athletes use it or folks like yourself anywhere in the spectrum of just, you know, good trained athletes. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't really do much. And people are like, you know, don't, probably don't waste your money. So we took all those data metrics, we combined them, and we get a list of supplements. Here it is. Just briefly mention them, briefly mention their effects. If you want more details, in the book, link in the description. Caffeine, like these aren't ranked by the way. 
Caffeine works, reduces um, how much pain you're feeling from exercise, increases your work capacity, uh, improves set-to-set recovery, gives you mental focus, reduces your hunger. Caffeine is a hell of a drug, right? It works super well. You gotta be intentional about taking it. You can take too much for sure. <coughs> Don't do anything crazy. You can use caffeine, it works. Whey protein, super high quality protein. Great to be a part of a meal replacement. Builds muscle, helps with recovery. Great product. Creatine. Creatine can make you gain muscle faster by a little bit, make your performance a little better, especially in repeat anaerobic trials like sets of five. Uh, creatine does good stuff, maybe even some health benefits there. And a lot of this is very, very research backed. Creatine has very, very clear benefits. They're not enormous, but they're definitely there. Casein protein is a slower digesting milk fraction, uh, the one that's not whey protein. And it's a really good meal replacement protein because it will leach out uh, from your stomach into the rest of your gastrointestinal tract over a very long time. <coughs> so if you are busy with something, maybe you're at a conference or at work, you can't eat for many, many hours, have a casein shake beforehand and you're good to go before sleep. Another really, really good option. Carb formulas. Sometimes it says that you have to eat 150 grams of carbs after your workout and then you have another meal of 100 grams of carbs and then you have to go to sleep. Good God, you can't stuff that many carbs down your gullet. You're just done eating. You're at the end of a mass gaining phase or muscle gain phase, and you're just, you've had it with food. Carb formulas can be an easy way to get a lot of carbs super quickly because it's just powder and you put them in, you drink them, and that's it. Uh, maltodextrin is a good example of one of those carbs. There's carb formulas that are slower digesting, and there's carb formulas that are super fast digesting for intro workout, like Gatorade, so on and so forth. It works super great. They're not magical, just help you get in the carbs faster, easier, less GI distress, if that's what you need. Multivitamins, not a magic supplement, but if you're eating a good diet and, you know, you have some kinks here and there, you can really smooth things out by eating a multivitamin to make sure you're definitely getting what you need to get rounding out your intake. It's like a bit of an insurance policy. The thing about multivitamins, one of the ways they make our list is their effect is really tiny, but their price is so small, it almost doesn't make any sense to not take them right? Uh, the multivitamins are some fraction of a penny per, per pill. So really, really easy choice. And then uh, the last one is omega-3 fatty acid supplements. If you already have a good omega-3 source in your diet, you don't need them at all. Uh, you don't actually need any of these supplements, but um, that's why they're supplements. So omega-3 fat supplements, um, uh, DHA, EPA, um, sometimes the quality is an issue. If you get rancid fish oil, it's no good. But if you get good quality supplements, it can help a little bit. There's some good research showing that omega-3 supplements are, are beneficial to a variety of things. They're not panaceas. There's been especially a good volume of recent research that has really tempered the excitement about omega-3 fatty acid supplements, which was always kind of incoming. Because if you look at the theoretical underpinnings of these supplements and most of the early work, some people just wildly exaggerated and are like, this is just going to cure every disease, it's great for everything. It's not. It's a small effect. But it might help with health, might help with fat loss, brain function, just a tiny little bit. So uh, you can have it. Don't expect crazy results. 